Uh, Gabor, you have been looking at the most recent trends in uh, foreign direct investment to the countries of Central Eastern and Southeastern Europe. So what's the situation looking like? Well, uh, we have just prepared a, a study on the uh, foreign direct investment inflows in the Central and East European countries. And uh, I can say that uh, there is an upswing in all respects, uh, both in terms of uh, FDI flows and in terms of uh, the uh, newly established greenfield investment projects. Okay. Um, I can remember last time you told me that there was a decline of uh, FDI into going into the countries uh, that are the EU member states of Central and Eastern Europe. Has this changed uh, most recently? Right. Uh, we can see a very sharp upturn in uh, respect to the new EU member states. But I must say that part of uh, this upswing is methodologically driven. We have uh, some problems uh, with the content of FDI data. Uh, that is compiled by the national banks of these countries. We could adjust it in case of Hungary, which uh, gives a more detailed picture. But for example, uh, if we follow the data uh, published by the Slovak National Bank, we have negative inflows for each of the last four years, which is in a clear contradiction to the uh, well-known investment projects that are going into this country. So it is only one part of the picture that we get through the FDI data. The other uh, part of the picture we get through the uh, new FDI inflows into greenfield projects. And in both terms, now there is an upswing. Of course, it's much more in terms of FDI flows where uh, uh, Czech Republic and Hungary uh, underwent a real change, whereas it was a very low last time. Okay. Um, and about the more peripheral regions, uh, Western Balkans, CIS, what could you tell us there? Yeah, the Western Balkans has been uh, quite a stable receiver of FDI, actually, for the last couple of years. Uh, first of all, BI is doing very well. Uh, it is attracting greenfield projects as well. And in terms of FDI inflows, Albania is catching up to the rest of the countries, which is partially due to the, well, the more uh, rudimentary uh, FDI that is coming in the beginning of a, an economic takeoff. Uh, that is the energy sector, infrastructure, and uh, things like that. The more advanced uh, economic structure we can uh, find in uh, Macedonia, and Macedonia is uh, actually the only country in the region that is really included into international value chains of the automotive industry. Now, as to the CIS countries, uh, there we have a really big uh, uh, recovery of FDI in Russia. Now, this is mainly due to one single project. Almost 20% of the capital of, of Rosneft was sold uh, to an international consortium in December last year, and uh, this uh, increased uh, the FDI inflow by one third. So this is uh, one thing. The other thing is that, interesting enough, Russia has been a stable receiver of greenfield FDI over the last few years. Uh, I mean, not very much uh, if you compare it to the size of the country. But it is rather stable, especially if you keep in mind that the Russian economy has not been doing very well over the, in the past few years. And this uh, phenomenon may be due to the greenfield investments of an import substitution type. As you know, there are uh, sanctions, there are uh, uh, all sorts of, uh, of limitations of, of trade, uh, both imposed by Russia and by the outside world. So it is advantageous for uh, companies that want to, to sell in Russia to put up their dairy farms uh, or, or uh, furniture uh, companies in the country in order to uh, sell to the domestic uh, consumer. Mm -hmm. So summing up the whole situation for the wider region, Central, Eastern and Southeastern Europe, what's your view on the current trend and uh, for the coming years? 
FDI uh, depends to uh, some extent uh, of the general state of the economy, whether there is uh, more demand, whether there is uh, uh, investments uh, uh, at large uh, increasing. And here we can see a real recovery in the region and also in Europe to some extent. Um, the Vienna Institute is just about to, uh, to modify the uh, economic outlook for the region upwards. And uh, this is something very attractive for, for investors. And we can get into a, a quite a, a, a positive spiral of, uh, of more demand, more investments, generating again uh, more income in the region. Thank you very much, Gabo. Thank you.